Hello everyone, in this video we continue our uh, tour of historic homes and buildings in America's Georgia. Hope you enjoy these videos. If you do, we ask you to do the standard YouTube stuff, you know, uh, give us a like by mashing that thumbs up button, subscribing to the channel. If you uh, have something to share, uh, put that down in the comment section and uh, share this video with other people that might enjoy uh, seeing these homes. And as always, Kathy and I just wish you have a very, very blessed day. I'm so used to pulling over in that lane, honey. I started to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is where we left off. Mm -hmm. It's number 16. Well, that's the house up there on the left, and the one next to it, I think. Uh -huh. And that's Brown Street right here. Okay. So that's probably that first house after you turn on Brown yeah, Street. Yeah, gotta find some place to kind of park. Mm -hmm. I guess. I don't see a sign. <laughs> I've been in that apartment thing, yeah, it's that one right there. Uh, <coughs> back there in the back. <coughs> Number 19. Originally built by pioneer resident Seth Kellum Taylor in the 1850s, the house was left to Taylor's daughter Lucy and her husband, Mayor John B. Felder. Mayor Felder served as mayor for 20 years, a city record. This imposing residence, originally built in the Italian H style, was extensively remodeled in the classical revival style in 1906-1907, by Frank Lanier. Uh, it gained the Corinthian columns, the two-story uh, portico, the plate glass windows, and the leaded glass fanlight entrance. The only original uh, work from the uh, original facade is the wide panel pilasters at the corners uh, with their jigsaw ornamentation at the tops. This late Victorian house, built around 1892, was remodeled in the colonial revival style popular in the 1920s and 1930s. Built in 1933 for Frank Sheffield, a ski on of a prominent local banking family, this house is a very good example of the 1930s colonial revival style. Mr. Sheffield was interested in music and theater, and the second floor was set up so that two bedrooms could be converted into a miniature home theater by means of sli a sliding wood partition. That house right there <coughs> <Yeah. clears throat> was sold in 
2013 for $153,000 and that's valued at two seventy nine. But this address has A, B, and C. You know, yeah. it says it's 3697 square feet, single home, three bedrooms, four bathrooms. <coughs> but you know, that's an apartment thing um, right behind there. Uh, that's I don't think it's attached to the house, but I've been in that one back there in the back because I knew somebody a long time ago that lived in it. Uh -huh. So I don't know if it's including the entire space or just that part, but it's valued at 279 now. Yeah. So you've got those two. I got those two. I just need the next one, which is 20. Which is this brick house right here. This house is a good example of the early 20th century Italian or Mediterranean revival style. This beautiful house with its lower and deep arcaded porch was designed about 1917 as an expansion and remodeling of an existing house by prominent Georgia architect T.F. Lockwood of Columbus who also designed 124 Taylor Street. It was occupied for many years by the original builder prominent wholesale grocer Car, Car S. Glover. Since 1977, it has been the home of Senator George Hooks and family. And that's number 21. This is an elegant antebellum cottage. Uh, some people didn't know what antebellum meant. It means before the Civil War. Uh, it was built around 1850 uh, with unusual nine over six windows on the front. The original front porch was removed and pediment door case was added in a 1930s remodeling. This house was built in 1892 and 1893 as the home of Charles F. Crisp, Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives from 1891 to 1895. This was the highest position in the United States government ever attained by a Confederate veteran.
This house was built about 1848 as a modest one-story cottage. This handsome house was greatly enlarged and remodeled around 1885, similar in appearance and construction history to the house at 504 Reese Park. house down here before that. Maybe it wasn't on the hysterical thing, but I thought it was. Find that house there that's not on it. It is. I don't see a... 128. Hold on. Let's see. No, it's that one right here. Okay. Number 24. I'm going to pull in here and pull our kind and get off the road. Yeah, that's 124 Taylor. Right there. And that other house, 128, I thought it was going to be on there, but it's not on here. This 1920s house is a superb example of the Mediterranean Revival style popular at the time. Note the original tile roof with its deep overhangs and beautifully designed arched windows. The house was designed by noted Georgia architect T.F. Lockwood for prominent local businessman Davis R. Anderson. It was for many years the home of Coca-Cola bottler uh, J.T. Warren. This house was built in 1881 by prominent haberdasher John R. Shaw as a gift to his bride, Kate Felder, the sister of the mayor. This charming cottage is another example of mid-Victorian mid eclecticism. Subsequently, it became the home of Samuel R. Hayes, the clerk of the Superior Court. Upon Mrs. Hayes' death, the house was sold to her nephew, William C. Smith, a prominent local attorney who for many years used it as a, his law office. Although not a large house, the lavish details attest to the prosperity of the original owner. Did you take a picture of that building I did. just to be taking it? Yeah. What? It's not anything anymore, is it? No. No, well, I mean, is it? What did it used to be? First Christian Church. Does it have a sign up there yeah. or something? It's right there on the sign. Right? Well, I couldn't remember what kind of church And when we did the church, church things, I read, and I think somebody at that time was having Sunday school or something in there, honey. Yeah, I couldn't remember what kind of church it was, but it's a shame. It's pretty yeah. old. And yeah, it's just old. It needs fixing. That's a nice house, and it's got a gazebo they, in the back. They keep that one, looks like they keep that one up. Yeah. I'm surprised that that house is on it right yonder. What's That's that number that? 34. Oh, it's okay. <coughs> I'm gonna get down here, Finn Street's on the, I'm pretty sure it's on, it's on this side. Probably the next street down, but it's the one on the corner. 
house is. Did you say the Episcopal Church was there? The next one, yeah. I mean, after 401. Well, where's the one that... I'm trying to see it's one of those houses back there. Okay. Oh, I've corner. got this in a, somewhere, honey, but I'll take another one. I can just... <clears throat> 408 South Lee Street, Cavalry, Episcopal Church. Yeah. Number 27. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to see where this number 26 is showing at the corner. <clears throat> it's across the street over there somewhere. It's kind of on the corner. Uh -huh. It's that little house right across the street, honey. It's number 26. Uh, yeah, okay. That's what I thought. This handsome Greek Revival cottage was built around 1850 with dental cornice and pediment portico with Doric columns and antis that means set between square pillars. Other than two bay windows added to the north side of the house in the 1870s, the exterior is almost completely unchanged. The present English Gothic style ed edifice of the Calvary Episcopal Church was built in 1919 to replace a frame building from the 1860s. Calvary Church and the Lod Pennington Chapel in Andersonville are the only buildings in Georgia to have been designed by Raph Adams Cram of Boston, considered the foremost church architect of the United States in the early 20th century. The interior boasts beautifully carved woodwork. Okay, the next one is, uh, you can't go down here now, but you gotta get back over and just get on uh, Church Street. Uh, <clears throat> it's the corner of Church and, I mean not Church, College Street and Lee Street. Uh, Yes, yeah, one right across on from this the funeral street right, right here. here. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, that one. Yeah, that one's number twenty-eight. And then you got a dip of the on Hancock side street up from that number, or or it's on the corner of Hancock and West College. And then you got thirty, thirty-one, and thirty-two on West College in a row. Yeah. One of these down here was number 34, what, right? Yeah. They got that tall tour up, huh? But we can get there. Number 34. Number 
and like you said, a lot of these probably should be on it, I think, because they, they're old. Some of these are older than the ones that are on the, on the list. Should be this one up here on the left, huh? It's number 28. Yeah. Uh, I see the sign from here. Yeah. And then number 29 is, uh... <clears throat> is it on Lee Street, too, or is it... It's, uh... It's on Hancock. Uh -huh. On Street Down. Well, I think it's on the corner of College and Hancock down here. This huge Queen Anne style residence was built around 1893 by Uriah Harold, prominent local cotton broker from one of America's wealthiest families. Yeah, there we go. I know they've got parking spaces over here, don't they? Over here. Yeah, I guess I could park here on the street, couldn't I? Yeah. It doesn't say no parking. I see people park over here when they... For the funeral, yeah. And that's Hancock right there, so... I just need to... Hold on, let me see. Okay. And maybe that house, there's that white house right under on the corner. See the sign? Okay, yeah. No? Yeah. Well, I'm going to pull right around the corner and park, huh? Let's see what number it says. Well, that says number 29, so yeah. hold on a minute. Yeah, that one yeah, down there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's that one down there, and that's number 29. All uh, right. And then 30, 31, and 32 is, is down here on College Street. All uh right. -huh. This beautiful little cottage was built uh, around 1853-1854 for America's first newspaper publisher. It's the town's only surviving example of the Gothic Revival style popular in the middle years of the 19th century. The steeply pitched roof, clustered chimney stacks, finials, trefoils, and lace-like gingerbreads are all typical of the style. The front porch, originally only as wide as the center gable, was extended across the entire facade in the 1890s. This imposing residence, built in 1909 for a scion of the prominent Harrow family, is a fine example of the classical revival popular in the early 20th century. This attractive Greek Revival cottage was built around 1850. 
very little has changed except for the addition of brackets and spindle freeze to the portico which was done around 1890. This is a good example of a mid 19th century house. Note the front door with its arch panels and the beautiful floor length windows which originally opened onto full width porch remodeled during the early 1970s. Mm -hmm. 